hello guys welcome to my channel so as if you have seen the previous video so we studied about uh, the basic chemistry we are studying about the covalent bond ionic bond and now we are moving further and we will study about hydrogen bonds so hydrogen bonds are important non-covalent bonds for many biological molecules so as you know like water accounts for 70 percent of a cell weight and most intracellular reaction occurs in the aqueous environment so most intracellular reaction occurs in an aqueous environment all right so to understand the hydrogen bond we'll see uh, we'll try to understand with the water molecule so as you can see in this picture so there is uh, as you know there is two hydrogen and an oxygen atom so two hydrogen atoms share their electron with an oxygen atom and oxygen atom. so like if you know the oxygen has uh, two electrons in the first orbit and six electrons in a second orbit so in order to complete a second orbit for the oxygen they need two electrons so the hydrogen share one hydrogen share one electron and the other hydrogen share other electron with the oxygen and that is how oxygen completes its orbit so this is how it forms h2o so while sharing this so you understand like when electron is sharing it's giving its electron so like the hydrogen has a positive charge and then oxygen is receiving electrons so it will have more electrons and it will have negative charge on it so there is an unequal distribution of electrons in the water molecule so with the preponderance preponderance of positive charge on two hydrogen atom and a negative charge on the oxygen atom and so when this positively charged region of one water molecule that is with the hydrogen atom concludes to a negatively charged region that is an oxygen of a second water molecule the electrical attraction between the positive and the negative charge can establish weak bond and that is called hydrogen bond so the bond between the hydrogen that is positively charged and an oxygen that is negatively charged so one water molecule and the other water molecule attracts together with the hydrogen and oxygen and build a weak bond and this is a hydrogen bond so these bonds are much weaker than the covalent bonds and in each water molecule uh, sorry each water molecule can form hydrogen bonds through its two hydrogen atoms to other water molecules producing a network in which hydrogen bonds are continuously broken and formed and it is because of this interlocking hydrogen bonds that water at a room temperature is liquid with a high surface tension and not a gas so because of this reason the water is a liquid hydrogen bonds are not limited to water so it's not on like this like the hydrogen bond is just formed in the water in general a hydrogen bond can form whenever a positively charged hydrogen atom held in one molecule by a polar covalent linkage come close to a negatively charged atom typically an oxygen or a nitrogen belonging to another molecule so this can be formed a hydrogen bond can be formed with an oxygen or nitrogen it's not specifically to the limited to water molecule so like suppose there is another molecule as well that has like the uh, nitrogen for example nitrogen atom and hydrogen atom a molecule so the hydrogen and the nitrogen of that molecule can come and make a hydrogen bond all right so hydrogen bond can also occur between different parts of a single large molecule so it also can occur in just one molecule it's not necessary that there should be a two molecules to form a hydrogen bond if there is a big single molecule large molecule so the hydrogen bond can be formed in that molecule as well where they often had the molecule to fold in a particular shape molecules such as alcohol that contains polar bonds that can form hydrogen bonds mix well with the water so the molecules carrying positive or negative negative charges you know as that is an ions likewise dissolve readily in water such molecules are termed hydrophilic meaning they love water so these are the hydrophilic uh, molecules because they are easily dissolved in water a large proportion of molecules in uh, aqueous environment of a cell fall into this category so there is a large proportion of hydrophilic molecules so like 
examples are sugars, DNA, RNA, and a majority of proteins that all are considered as an hydrophilic. Uh, there is hydrophobic as well, molecules by contrast are uncharged and form a few or no hydrogen bonds and they do not dissolve in water. So there are like hydrophobic as well. So the molecule that does not have a charge and that cannot form hydrogen bond or maybe form like few of the bonds. So they are called hydrophobic, that is water fearing molecules. Hydrocarbons, if you heard about hydrocarbons, hydrogen and carbon are important hydrophobic cell constituents. In this molecule, the hydrogen atoms are covalently linked with the carbon atoms by non-polar bonds. Because the hydrogen atom, almost no net positive charge, have almost no net positive charge, they cannot form effective hydrogen bonds to other molecules. This makes hydrocarbon as a whole hydrophobic a property that is exploited by cell, whose membrane are constructed largely from lipid molecules that have long hydrocarbon tails. So that's why the hydrocarbons, this was, this was about the hydrogen bonds. So we understand hydrogen bonds and that are also really important for the cell. Specifically, that gives like water for hydrophobic and hydrophilic molecules. So now we'll study about some polar molecules that forms acid and bases in water and that how we will understand what are acids and what are bases. As we can see in this picture, like we'll see an example of this. So this is an acetic acid, the chemical formula and like this is how it is. Like we'll just see the acetic acid and then we'll go further in the reaction. So if one of the simplest kind of reaction and one that has profound significance in cell takes place when a molecule, for example, that is an acetic acid, possesses a highly polar covalent bond between a hydrogen and another atom dissolves in water. So like when, if you see the acetic acid formula, so like you are seeing the high is an hydrogen atom that is covalently bonded with an oxygen in the acetic acid molecule. All right, so this is how the hydrogen is linked with an oxygen. So the, so the hydrogen atom in such a bond, in this polar covalent bond has given up its entirely, its electron almost entirely to the companion atom. So it exists when it gives an electron, so it has just put on. So, so the hydrogen atom is almost naked positively charged hydrogen nucleus. In other words, it is known as a proton. That is an H plus that we know H plus proton. So when this polar molecule that is the acetic acid is surrounded, so like when this acetic acid is surrounded by a water molecule, suppose when it goes into the water, so it is surrounded by the water molecule, the proton that is the hydrogen, our positively charged hydrogen atom is attracted to the what to the partial negative charge of the oxygen. As we discussed before that oxygen has a negative charge. So it will definitely be attracted towards the water molecule and towards the negative charge oxygen and it is a water molecule and when it goes towards on that side when we see this reaction in the picture so it generates an hydronium ion because h2o and like now it will have one more hydrogen atom and it will generate hydronium ion h3o plus so the reverse reaction also the reverse reaction also takes place very readily so one has to imagine an equilibrium state in which billions of protons are constantly fitting to and fro between one molecule and another in an aqueous solution. So this goes really fast. Substance that releases proton. Substance that releases proton when they dissolve in water, thus forming H3O plus are termed as, termed as acids. So we know what are acids now. What are acids? So substances that releases proton when they dissolve in water and forming hydronium ions that is H3O plus are termed as acids as simple as that. So the higher the concentration of H3O plus the more acidic the solution is. H3O plus is present even in pure water but at a concentration of 10 raised to minus 7 mole as a result of the movement of protons from one water molecule to, no, to the another. So as you can see in this picture, so there is H2O2 water molecules that has hydrogen bond, but like 
one hydrogen is going really fast to the another one forming hydrogen hydronium ion and hydroxyl and the vice versa and they are maintaining the equilibrium thus maintaining the water uh, basic with the pH 7. By tradition the H3O plus concentration is usually referred as the H plus concentration even though most protons in an aqueous solution are present as H3O plus. So like usually like it's we do not say like H3O plus concentration in short we just mention like H plus concentration. So H plus concentration is the same as the H3O plus concentration. It's it is just shared it is just said and to avoid the use of unwindly numbers so the concentration of h plus is expressed using a logarithmic scale called ph scale uh, the pure water has a ph of 7 and thus it is a neutral it's not acidic and not basic that is alkaline so acids are characterized as uh, being strong or weak depending on how readily they give up their protons to water so the acids what type, how, there are two types strong acids and weak acids and it depends on how readily they give up their protons to the water uh, strong acids for example such as hydrochloric acid lose their proton easily acidic acid on the other hand is a weak acid because it holds on its protons tightly when dissolved in water and many of these acids important are important in the cell such as molecule containing carboxylic group so there are molecules that contains a carboxylic group COH are weak acids their tendency to give up a proton with some reluctance is a useful characteristic as it renders the molecules sensitive to changes in pH in the cell a property that can be exploited to regulate the functions protons can pass readily to many types of molecules in cells thus altering the molecules characters the H plus concentration inside the cell must be closely controlled because of this proton movement and that alters the character of the molecule the H plus concentration inside the cell uh, that is its pH must be closely controlled as it's especially weak acids will give up their protons more readily if the H plus concentration is low and will tend to accept them back if the concentration is high so the weak acids are important so suppose in the solution if the concentration is low they will give protons readily but if it is high then they will take back the H plus. The opposite of an acid is a base. So we studied about acid and the opposite is a base that is an alkaline which includes any molecule that accept a proton when dissolved in water. This is just a vice versa as simple as that. Just defining, just as defining the property of an acid is that it raises the concentration of H3O plus ion by donating a proton to a water molecule. So the defining property of a base is that it raises the concentration of hydroxyl ion by removing a proton from a water molecule. So for example, there's a sodium hydroxide is a basic. The term alkaline is also used because it dissociates in aqueous solution to form and a plus and OH minus negative ions because it does so readily that NaOH is called a strong base. Weak bases which have a weak tendency to accept a proton from water however are actually more important in cells. Many biological important weak bases contain an amino group that is NH2 group which can render it an uh, hydroxyl ion by taking a proton from water and this is just a simple reaction that it's goes uh, amino group plus H2 that will give an H3 plus hydroxyl ion because an OH negative ion combines with a proton to form a water molecule that is hydroxyl ion with proton to form water molecule an increase in hydroxyl ion concentration forces a decrease in the H plus concentration and the vice versa so a pure solid a pure solution of water thus contains an equal concentration of both ions rendering it pH neutral at 7. The interior of a cell is also kept close to neutral by the presence of buffers, mixture of weak acid and bases that can adjust the proton concentration and they are referred to as buffer.
Right guys, so that was uh, about what our acid base is and we also studied about the hydrogen bonds. Right, so just take a look at this picture. So it's just, uh, it will give you just a basic idea that we studied it right now. So like this is the carbon and hydrogen together make stable compounds that are called hydrocarbons that we studied, that are hydrophobic as well. These are non-polar, do not form hydrogen bonds and are generally insoluble in water. And you can see in the picture, it has methane and methyl group, how they are connected. All right, this, uh, this table shows the carbon and oxygen compounds. Many biological compounds contain a carbon that are covalently bonded to an oxygen. So the example are alcohol. So the which is called the hydroxyl group. So in alcohol, you can say this, uh, aldehyde. So then there's also the carbon is attached to an oxygen. The C2 is called a carbonyl group. You have to remember that ketone has the same thing. That is carboxylic acid. So in this, the COOH is called a carboxylic group. In water, this loses an hydrogen as present to become COO. All right. And then these are esters are formed by combining an acid and an alcohol. So here you can see this is a carboxylic group, carboxylic acid, then it's plus HO. See, that is an alcohol and it combines together the form. And there's, there are carbon and nitrogen compounds as well. So what are these? Amines and amides are two important examples of compounds containing a carbon linked to nitrogen. So in amines, water combines with an H plus ion to become positively charged. So this is an amine and when it combines with H plus, so it will give you this. Amides are formed by combining an acid and an amine. So that is carboxylic acid as you can see and there is an amine. When they combine together that will form a Nitrogen also occurs in several ring compounds including important constituents of nucleic acid, purines and pyrimidines. So this are example of ring compounds. So, uh, there are phosphates as well. Inorganic phosphate is stable in formed. Uh, uh, is a stable ion formed from phosphoric acid at CPO4 is also written as P3. Phosphate esters can form between a phosphate and a free hydroxylic group. Phosphate groups are often covalently attached to a protein in this way. Uh, these are just a few examples. This is about hydrophilic molecules and hydrophobic. So the hydrophilic, as you can see in this picture, it shows clearly substance that is all readily in water are termed as hydrophilic. They include ions and polar molecules that attract water molecules through electrical charges. Effect water molecules surround each ion or polar molecule and carry it into the solution. So you can see in this example, ionic substance such as sodium chloride dissolve the NaCl because water molecules are attracted to the positive Na plus or negative Cl minus charge of each ion. And polar substance such as urea in dissolves because their molecules form hydrogen bonds with the surrounding water molecule. And in hydrophobic molecules, substance that contain a preponderance of non-polar covalent, usually insoluble in water because it does not have any ions or positive or negative charge to be attracted and to make a bond and turn the hydrophobic. And so have little tendency around them and bring them into the solution. So hydrocarbons, which contain many carbon to hydrogen bond, especially hydrophobic. That's why, and yeah, you can see the water as a solvent. Many substances such as household sugar dissolving water, thus molecules separate from each other, be each becoming surrounded by the water molecule. Substance dissolved in water, mixture is solution, and dissolved substance is a solute. That does the dissolving is the solvent. In this case, the water. So these are acids. We studied acids that release hydrogen ions into solutions are called acids. Many of these acids important in the cell are not completely dissociated and they are therefore weak acids. For example, a carboxylic group that we already discussed from a hydrogen ion in solution. And the hydrogen ion exchange positively charged hydrogen ion can spontaneously move from one water molecule to another by creating two ionic 
species. Uh, this is just a pH. This is just a pH about the acidity and the logarithmic values and the bases. Substance that reduces the number of hydrogen ions in the solution are called bases. Some bases such as ammonia combines directly with the hydrogen ions. This is NH3 plus H plus that gives ammonium ion. Other bases such as sodium hydroxide we discussed as well reduces some H plus ion directly by making OH ions that combine directly with H plus ion to make H2O. That's separately. Yeah. This is found in the cell partially associated with H plus ions and form a term weak base. This is two of compounds that contain an amino group which has a weak tendency to reversible except H plus ions from water thereby increasing the concentration of free hydroxyl ions. Alright guys, so this was our review of acid base and hydrogen bond. Alright, thank you guys for watching and if you like it please subscribe my channel i will be posting more videos as well as we go further thank you so much